Biblical creationism denies three forms of scientific inquiry. It is challenged by three schools of scientific study. This triumvirate is cosmology, abiogenesis, and evolution. Biblically, all three are conflated into one project of an omnipotent mind. In order for the biblical creation story to be true, all three fields of theoretic scientific exploration have to be proved wrong. Presently, the amount of evidence for evolution amassed is staggering, and is pretty much unassailable. But it relies heavily on hard-to-understand minutia about genomes and alleles and recombinant proteins. Still, at even an elementary level, the evidence is compelling. But still, creationists use misinformation to poison the well, and are often successful in convincing those who are predisposed to want to be convinced. Abiogenesis is another issue altogether. The science is still out on that one, and the mechanisms and circumstances behind it are so distant and not easily repeatable that people often casually simply dismiss the idea out of hand without even entertaining the possibility. Yet, if Big Bang cosmology and evolution are correct, then the biblical explanation is wrong, and all we are left with is abiogenesis, no matter how discomforting the lack of hard evidence may be. The fact that we don't have a full understanding yet doesn't mean it is untrue. Prior to Darwin, we didn't even have a basic understanding of what drives evolution. But as I said, if only one of the three fields of study proves unassailable, then biblical creationism myth falls apart. So all that's needed is for one to be presented in a way that is irrefutably logically sound. So here in a nutshell, complete with footnotes and hyperlinks, is the argument for Big Bang cosmology. The Sun is the center of our solar system. Our Sun is one star of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Scientists have observed the existence of many million other galaxies in the universe. Matter is composed of energy. Light is composed of both particles and waves. Sound is composed only of waves in a medium such as air or fluid. Light travels at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. The process by which lighter elements become heavier elements is called fusion. During fusion, energy is either released or absorbed depending upon the atomic weight of the elements involved. Stars are powered by the process of nuclear fusion. Stars will over time deplete all of their available energy. At such a time, the stars will either implode or explode depending on the mass of the star. All the matter in the universe could have once been hydrogen, but was changed to all of the present elements as a result of fusion in stars or the deaths of stars. Many stars have been observed undergoing that process. Because we observe these star deaths in our time, and because the speed of light is a constant, this means that as a matter of necessity, these stars died billions of years in the past. Calculating backward to the furthest light we can observe, we can determine the age of the universe to at least that number. We can also determine using red and blue shift that our universe is currently expanding. If we calculate the expansion backwards, we can determine whether all of the mass in the universe was once in a single location at roughly the same point in history that the most distant, hence oldest, light ever observed was beginning its journey through space. Such a point in space would be called a singularity. If we determine that all of the mass in the universe was once in a single location at roughly the same point in history that the most distant, hence oldest light ever observed was beginning its journey through space, then we will have compelling evidence that the universe was once barren of energy and matter, except for the singularity. 
the numbers do in fact gel to form a picture of a universe barren of energy and matter approximately 14 billion years ago. The universe began in a Big Bang singularity roughly 14 billion years ago. Thank you.